In this video, we're going to talk about extrude cage. This function extrudes selected control cage faces, edges, or polylines by translating them and creating new faces to fill spaces in between. So you must be in real life shape application, and I'll show you where it's located. So let's first go into the NX realize shape application, which is located here. And before we begin, we're going to have to use a primitive shape in order to show you how this particular function works. Let's go to primitive shape. And I'm going to select the block and I'm going to leave it at 100 length, width and height. Select OK. And notice here we have our block. Now the extrude cage function is located under the create group and it's right here but you have to select on the downward arrow you then select extrude cage now we have the extrude cage dialog appears and here it's asking us to select an object that is a face or edge so in this case we're going to select this face here and we're going to first go to drag linear now uh, what this will do is if we notice we have a little arrowhead sticking out of our face and what we can do is we can actually select on it with our left mouse button pull and drag and notice that we can extend or extrude the face and notice that it is filling in the spaces between as a pull from the previous block and notice I can also put in the distance numerically here or if we go into here with the limit under distance, we can also put in a numerical value. Now at this point, if you're happy with what you have, you can select OK and exit out. But let's go ahead and take a look at Transform tab. Now the Transform tab allows us to do a lot of different things to the face, which then affects our block. And notice right below we have Move Tool Only. This allows us to, if we select and put a check in the box, this will move this tool here anywhere we want and only the tool. And I put it back where I had it and then I'm going to deselect it but I'm going to leave relocate tool to selection which will put it right back to the face and it'll reorientate the tool to the selection. So we're going to leave it where it is. Now below that we have scaling and we have three choices linear, planar, and uniform. Now if I go ahead and I select linear and I'm going to go ahead and select this little sphere on the end of the scale of our tool and notice I'm going to pull and nothing happens or you can barely see anything happening but if I go ahead and select either planar or uniform notice now how much bigger and smaller I can make our face and I can do the same thing with uniform now the difference really between planar and uniform in linear is basically what we just did. If I go ahead, leave it on uniform, and I select the sphere above here, notice I'll get the same effect as I did selecting this one and as well as this one. If I go to planar and I select that sphere, notice that I get a vertical effect when I drag that out and if I select the XC sphere, notice I get a horizontal effect when I drag that. So those are basically the differences. Everything else you can basically just go ahead and I can still pull it and then if I grab this sphere here I can twist and if I grab the center sphere Notice I can pull it up and down and side to side or even at angles. 